Here's one GPT that I use more than others. And for a very important reason, it's because it can do so much of the manual work that you do on the internet for you. When you use a large language model, it needs to be connected to the internet in the right way. And I like using internet connected GPTs like WebPilot. I'm going to show you exactly how you can use WebPilot to get more accurate information when you start new chats inside of ChatGPT and go over some of the pros and cons of using it versus something like Browse with Bing, kind of the default way to connect to the internet inside of ChatGPT. All right, let's jump into it. But before we do, let me tell you a little bit about what this is. So my name's Jordan Wilson, and I'm the host of Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI to grow their companies and careers. If that's you, please subscribe to this channel and go to youreverydayai.com. Sign up for that free daily newsletter. So I actually did a pretty long uh, episode uh, about a week or two ago about the correct ways to give chat GPT access to the internet. So if you are interested in this, if this is something that uh, you know, you're having troubles with, I go, go listen to episode 350 or you can watch the video. That actually might be better. But here's one of the reasons why. When you are using large language models, best case scenario is you're working with data that's maybe eight months old. And a lot of times it's a year and a half old. Yes, there is a knowledge cutoff inside of ChatGPT of October, 2023, but that does not mean that all of the information in there is from 2023. There's offline data sets, all of this work, but essentially, when you start inside of ChatGPT, the best way to get better outputs uh, to reduce hallucinations is to start with more specific copy. In our free Prime Prop Polish course, we teach Refine Q inside of Priming um, that goes over this. So if you want access, it's a free course, uh, no no tricks, just leave a, a comment that says PPP, or actually, you know what, just go to the website, sign up for the newsletter, and you can reply to that PPP. That'll be easier. So just go do that. All right, let's talk about WebPilot right now. So let's see a couple things that it can do. I always say, just ask the GPT, say, what can WebPilot do? All right, so GPTs obviously replaced plugins uh, about six months ago when they got rid of plugins. And GPTs are essentially, you can create your own, uh, but there's also a, a directory that has uh, millions of GPTs. The problem is, FYI, it's actually hard to find. Uh, so you'll see here I'm searching for WebPilot, and it's not even coming up. So I'll leave the actual link uh, because uh, searching the directory is pretty terrible. So you'll see here uh, it says that it has two primary functions, web page reading and data collection, and also long content writing. So it looks like it's actually, I don't know if this is a, a feature of web reader. It looks like it might be, or uh, it might be a different GPT. I'm actually not even sure. That's new. I haven't seen that before, even though I use this all the time. So now it says some of the use cases, summarizing articles or pages, research and fact checking, uh, drafting documents. All right. So let's just dive in. We're going to go over a couple examples. So first we're going to summarize a web page. All right. So let's go ahead and do this one. Let's go ahead, uh, grab this and I'm going to say, please summarize this web page. All right. And actually, you know what? I'm going to do something that we all should be doing. You should never be using a GPT in GPT mode. Uh, I actually just did that so you could see kind of the uh, the GPT information there. So I'm going to start a new chat, and then I'm going to at mention the web pilot. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to mention uh, right there web pilot. It should populate. There we go. And now I'm going to say please summarize this page. Okay. This is literally the uh, the article that I was just talking about, uh, about the correct ways to give ChatGPT access to the internet. So you'll see right here, it is starting the action. Uh, I'm actually on a different browser. I've been having some issues, so I'm actually on Firefox. Not thrilled about that. Um, so I had to give it access to uh, use this GPT. And you'll see here, uh, it's going to the correct link. That's good. It's summarizing the page. And then we'll go. So let's see if it does an accurate job. Uh, okay, it's doing a great job. This is all. Uh, this is all accurate. These are all things that I talked about. So let me just first, right, without having to go into that whole episode, let me first just tell you why you should be doing this. Uh, because if you're using the normal ChatGPT, it uses Browse with Bing. I've literally done hours of, of podcasts and videos on Browse with Bing. There's pros and there's cons. It's actually gotten a lot better. It's pretty good. But if I do this. 
Uh, let's see first if it's going to use Browse with Bing. But now I am not using uh, the web uh, the web pilot GPT, right? So it says I can't access specific web page that you created. All right, so this is actually good. Sometimes it's going to hallucinate. Uh, sometimes it's going to use Browse with Bing. So I'm gonna try a brand new chat and I'm gonna say using Browse with Bing. And then I'm gonna say, please summarize this web page. So now it's probably going to search Bing. All right, and here's the downside. It's going to just query uh, these keywords, the correct ways to give ChatGPT access to the internet. And it's probably, if it works here, okay, so this is good. It's at least saying that it can't do it. So normally what Browse with Bing will do a lot of the times is it'll hallucinate. It'll make things up or it will just go, just it, it'll query the keywords. It won't actually visit the web page, which is why uh, it's important to use an internet connected GPT like WebPilot. So you'll see here, I got an accurate and a pretty good, uh, pretty good description here. So uh, now let's go ahead and do another query. So we're going to test summarizing a web page. Uh, next, we're going to see if it can read a PDF. So I have a PDF right here on my website. So I'm grabbing that URL. Uh, I'm going back inside of this same chat and I'm saying, please. And I don't have to at mention uh, WebPilot again because you'll see it's right there at the bottom. So I am talking to this GPT. So I'm saying, uh, please, please summarize this PDF. All right. So we're doing tests here. You should always uh, be summarizing. So let's see if it can uh, read PDFs. All right, that's okay. And the reason I do this, back when there were plugins, there were times when uh, a plugin would say, oh, I can't access PDFs. And it actually could, uh, right? You have to remember with generative AI, uh, sometimes even when you're asking a GPT what it can do or what it can't do, you might not get 100% accurate information. So it's always best to test. All right, so it cannot uh, query, uh, or sorry, it cannot read a PDF. So now next I'm doing, I'm saying, tell me about Apple intelligence. So I'm doing a recent open query. So this is about, technically it's about something very recent. I'm not telling it. Uh, so this isn't a targeted call. So let's see if it's going to find recent information. Uh, all right. So in this case, it did not. So it's just bringing up some recent, in, uh, not so recent information. Uh, a lot of this is back from June, right? But I technically want to know about Apple, uh, Apple intelligence. And it was just, uh, there were some new details that just came out, uh, yesterday at their glow time event, September 9th. Uh, so now I'm going to do a targeted query, uh, with web pilot. So I'm saying, uh, tell me about the latest news and updates about Apple intelligence from September 9th, 2024 and September 10th, 2024. So essentially the last two days. So now uh, what we hope is going to happen here, let's see, there we go. So it's just using that as an exact query. All right, and there we go. So now uh, this looks much more up to date. This is correct now. So now it's talking about the iPhone 16 Pro and the iPhone 16 Pro Max and some of the Apple intelligence features that were included in that, which is what we wanted. Uh, so there we go. Very quick overview. And let me tell you, there's pros and there's cons to using the built-in Browse with Bing versus using a GPT. And the biggest one, at least for this particular GPT, WebPilot, which is one of my favorites, uh, does a great job for this one reason, reading specific PDFs, right? And you can usually do, uh, you know, up to five and tell it to go step by step. So maybe you're spending a lot of time each and every day, you know, reading blog posts. Maybe you spend an hour every single day and, you know, maybe only 10 to 20% of that is relevant to you, right? And you do it multiple times a day or multiple times a week. Maybe it's an ongoing weekly test. You can automate that, right? With a GPT uh, like web pilot. All right. I hope this was helpful. Please, if it was, subscribe to this channel, but go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for the free daily newsletter. Let me know what you want to hear next in our AI in 5 segment. We'll see you back. Thanks, y'all.